Uh, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. Seriously, I've been looking forward to talking to you. When I found out you were on my list, I'm like, here we go. We're going to talk. Yes. This is not your first movie, though. And, I, you know, you were in a, a film, The Odd Life of Timothy Green. I was. I love that movie. And they did a press tour. It came to Houston. And so we, we talked. But then when I was going through your list, I was, oh, that's right. He was in Oh, that. that was a joy. I mean, I, I actually got that role the day after In the Heights closed. Literally. Really? I, I, I was working on a musical in Atlanta. Uh, in the Heights closed, I got a literal midnight train to Georgia <laughs> because there was a blizzard and I needed to take the train there. And I uh, got an email from Peter Hedges inviting me to be a part of that film. So it you was know like, that's a song. It was literally like the door closed, the window open, and suddenly I was shooting a movie in Atlanta. That's the midnight train to Georgia. I was like, okay, yeah. the, the song. But also, The Force Awakens? You were in that as well. I mean, well, I wasn't in. Well, yeah, I guess my voice is in yeah, that. See? Yeah, that's okay. absolutely true. Yeah, that was a joy. Too. I wrote that song with JJ. We we co-wrote the tune, just sending a logic file back and forth. I was working on it between performances at Hamilton. So, how did Moana find its way to you? Oh, I you know, I I got this job way before any of the Hamilton stuff happened. Really? Uh, yeah, I uh, I interviewed and uh, you know John and Ron are responsible for my childhood happiness because they're the, they're the directors of Little Mermaid and Aladdin, and so I said you guys are the reason I'm even in this room, and uh, and then you know I got the job and I was just so thrilled to tell Moana's story. One represent a part of the world that's never sees themselves represented on screen, the Pacific Islands and, and that incredible culture. And two, this is like, she's so cool. Like she's so brave and uh, she's not looking for a boyfriend. She's looking to save the world. And right. I just thought, what better what better time to, to have this movie in our lives? How did you get, I've known The Rock for many, many years, but how did you get him to sing? You've, he's got a number called, you're welcome. And I actually, I was impressed with his singing voice, but how did you work with him and groom? You, you got it done. I well, I, I've been a fan of his since he was wrestling and you know, he used to, there was a time when he was a bad guy in wrestling, he'd pull out a guitar and make fun of whatever city he was in. <laughs> and so I watched this YouTube supercut of him as a wrestler playing guitar and I was like, okay, now I have a sense of where he's comfortable. And I wrote the song within that range, but then I also wrote some stuff that's a little out of that range. Like he's hitting a high A on, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, and he trained for it like he trains for his, for Fast Furious 8. Like he came in like ready and ready to play and have fun. And we had a great time recording the tune. Tell me the moment that you realized Hamilton was as big as as it as it is. When is the moment that you went, "Wow, this is big"? Um, I think for me, it was it was actually really early. It was when we were at the public and we announced our second extension. And Oscar Eustace, who runs the public theater, came in and says, "The phones are down. You broke our. We've had our our website crash, but we've never. No one's ever broken our phones. Uh, and that's when I realized this is this is a rocket. We're strapped to a rocket." Okay, so I want Hamilton tickets for Christmas. Hint, hint. No, I know you hear that all day. But what, what does Lynn manuel Miranda want for Christmas? What do I want for Christmas? Um, I want to uh, get more time with my family uh, and my wife and son and sort of have a very peaceful, quiet Christmas. And I also want that little mini Nintendo.